let's try to avoid nuance, Senator. Let me Do be you support gay marriage? No, Barack Obama nor I support redefining from a, a from a civil side what constitutes marriage. We do not support that. That is basically a decision to be able to be left to the face and people who practice their face the determination what you call it. The bottom line, though, is, and I'm glad to hear the governor, I take her at her word, obviously, that she thinks there should be no civil rights distinction, none whatsoever, between a committed gay couple and a committed heterosexual couple. If that's the case, we really don't have a difference. Is that what you said? Uh, your question to him was whether he supported uh, gay marriage, and my answer is the same as his, and, and it is that I do not. Wonderful. You agree. Let, on that note, let's move to foreign policy. Okay. <laughs> you both have sons who are in Iraq or on their way to Iraq. You, Governor Palin, have said that you would like to see a real clear plan for an exit strategy. What should that be, Governor? I am very thankful that we do have a good plan and the surge in the counterinsurgency strategy in Iraq that has proven to work. I am thankful that that is part of the plan implemented under a great American hero, General Petraeus, and pushed hard by another great American, Senator John McCain. I know that the other ticket opposed this surge, in fact, even opposed funding for our troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. Barack Obama voted against funding troops there after promising that he would not do so. And Senator Biden, I respected you when you called him out on that. You said that his vote was political and you said it would cost lives. And Barack Obama at first said he would not do that. He turned around under political pressure and he voted against funding the troops. We do have a plan for withdrawal. We don't need early, early withdrawal out of Iraq. We cannot afford to lose there or we're going to be no better off in the war in Afghanistan either. We have got to win in Iraq. And with the surge that has worked, we're now down to pre-surge numbers in Iraq. That's where we can be. We can start putting more troops in Afghanistan as we also work with our NATO allies who are there strengthening us. And we need to grow our military. We cannot afford to lose against al-Qaeda and the Shia extremists who are still there, still fighting us. But we're getting closer and closer to victory. And it would be a travesty if we quit now in Iraq. Senator. Gwen, with all due respect, I didn't hear a plan. Barack Obama has offered a clear plan. Shift responsibility to the Iraqis over the next 16 months, draw down our combat troops. Ironically, the same plan that Maliki, the, the Prime Minister of Iraq, and George Bush are now negotiating. The only odd man out here, only one left out, is John McCain, number one. Number two, with regard to Barack Obama not, quote, funding the troops, John McCain voted the exact same way. John McCain voted against funding the troops because the amendment he voted for, uh, voted against, had a timeline in it to draw down American troops. And John said, I'm not going to fund the troops if, in fact, there was a timeline. Barack Obama and I agree fully and completely on one thing. You've got to have a timeline to draw down the troops and shift responsibility to the Iraqis. We're spending $10 billion a month while the Iraqis have an $80 billion surplus. Barack says it's time for them to spend their own money, have the 400,000 military we've trained for them begin to take their own responsibility and gradually over six months, 16 months withdraw. John McCain, this is a fundamental difference between us. We will end this war. For John McCain, there is no end in sight to end this war. Fundamental difference. We will end this war. Governor. Um, your plan is a white flag of surrender in Iraq, and that is not what our troops need to hear today, that's for sure, and it's not what our nation needs to be able to count on. You guys oppose the surge. The surge works. Barack Obama still can't admit the, the surge works. We'll know when we're finished in Iraq, when the Iraqi government can govern its people, and when the Iraqi security forces can secure its people. And our commanders on the ground will tell us when those conditions have been met. And Maliki and Talib the Talibani also, in working with us, are knowing again that we're getting closer and closer to that point, that victory that's within sight. Now, you said regarding Senator McCain's uh, military policies there, Senator Biden, that you supported a lot of these things. In fact, you said that uh, you wanted to run, you'd be honored to run with him on the ticket. And that's an indication, I think, of some of the support that you had, at least until you became the VP pick here. Um, <laughs> 
You also said that Barack Obama was not ready to be commander in chief. And I know, again, that you opposed the move that he made to try to cut off funding for the troops, and I respect you for that. I, I don't know how you can defend that position now, but um, I, I know that you know, especially with your son in the National Guard, and I have great respect for your family also and the honor that you show our military. Um, Barack Obama, though, another story there. Anyone, I think, who can cut off funding for the troops after promising not to, that's another story. Senator Biden. John McCain voted to cut off funding for the troops. Let me say that again. John McCain voted against an amendment containing $1,600,000,000 that I had gotten to get MRAPs, those things that are protecting this, uh, the governor's son and pray God my son and a lot of other sons and daughters. He voted against it. He voted against it, the funding because he said the amendment had a timeline in it to end this war, and he didn't like that. But let's get straight who has been right and wrong. John McCain and Dick Cheney said, while I was saying we would not be greeted as liberators, we would not, this war would take a decade, not, the, uh, not a day, not a week, not six months. We would not be out of there quickly. John McCain was saying the Sunnis and Shias got along with each other without reading the history of the last 700 years. John McCain said there'd be enough oil to pay for this. John McCain has been dead wrong. I love him. As my mother would say, God love him, but he's been dead wrong on the fundamental issues relating to the conduct of the war. Barack Obama has been right. There are the facts. Let's move on to Iran and Pakistan. I'm curious about what you think, starting with you, Senator Biden, which is the greatest threat, a, a nuclear Iran or an unstable Pakistan? Explain why. Well, they're both extremely, uh, extremely dangerous. Uh, I always have focused, as you know, Gwen, I've been focusing on for a long time, along with Barack, on Pakistan. Pakistan already has nuclear weapons. Pakistan already has deployed nuclear weapons. Pakistan's weapons can already hit Israel and the Mediterranean. Iran getting a nuclear weapon would be very, very destabilizing. They are more than, they are not close to getting a nuclear weapon that's able to be deployed. So they're both very dangerous. They'd both be game changers. But look, here's what the fundamental problem I have with John's policy about terror and stability. John continues to tell us that the central war in the front on terror is in Iraq. I promise you, if an attack comes in the homeland, it's going to come as our, our security services have said. It's going to come from Al-Qaeda planning in the hills of Afghanistan and Pakistan. That's where they live. That's where they are. That's where it will come from. And right now, that resides in Pakistan. A stable government needs to be established. We need to support that democracy by helping them not only with their military, but with their governance as well as their economic well-being. There have been 7,000 madrasas built along that border. We should be helping them build schools to compete for those hearts and minds of the people in the region so that we are actually able to take on terrorism. And by the way, that's where bin Laden lives, and we will go at him if we have actionable intelligence.